This is the breakdown of school years one to four. So before I get started, I need to make it clear that every year has a theme to it. So year one has the theme. Actually, wait. Before I get into year one, this is actually a breakdown of years zero to four. So year zero does not mean primary school. Year zero is years eight and nine. So Year 10 is year 1, and you'll understand why I actually get to year 1, so year 0, which doesn't have a theme. When uh, I first started, I was an asshole, I, I was that guy who was like, yeah, I, I have a, a rich uncle. Like, you know, the, the, the kind of guy who, I've never actually said this, but what I did say is pretty similar, but the kind of guy I'd be like, uh, I'll, you know, my, my dad owns Microsoft, and obviously no one believed me, because that's just a completely obvious lie, and I think that's why I... Like, that's, that's the first, this was, like, the first thing I did when I started. And because of that, I got sort of have a reputation as that guy. As both an asshole and a liar. Anyway. Um, so. Trying to find out where the school video start. I'm just going to go to here. So, uh, at around November, December time, uh, a student was, I, I was lining up for class to, another student was walking to where the line is and was singing the lyrics to Kill Yourself by Bo Burnham. At the time, I did not know that that song existed and I assumed that he was telling me to kill myself so I reported him and he explained the context to the teachers and they you know they understood okay he's not telling Dylan to kill himself he's just singing a song even though that's not really a song he should be singing in school and that's fine I've made my peace with it now, but at the time I thought, no, this isn't fair. Why is he getting let off the hook when every single time I do something or even when I don't do something, I get in trouble? So the next day, I made a big deal out of it. I was like, uh, is, is the school treating, basically I, I accused the school of being biased because of his race, because that this guy came from South Africa. Um, I don't believe that now, I just want to make it clear. Although, this is an integrated school that we're talking about, so it isn't too far-fetched to say that, but I do, I do regret saying it, and I do apologise. I didn't actually apologise to him, but I just want to make it clear that I'm sorry. Right? And uh, that day, you know, he reported it. I uh, spoke to Hedy Ear. Um, Hedy Ear said that they have enough on me to permanently expel me. That is one of the biggest lies I have been told. Sorry, that is one of the biggest lies I have been sold. I believe her. I don't believe her now. Because it is a genuine lie. The only thing that they had on me that was even big was that incident where I called the guy, I called the school racist. And that's, but that's not grounds for being expelled or I'm just going to call it a C6. Like at most, I would say a C4, but that's at a push. Anyway. 
Uh, another incident that happened in uh, this was year eight was on the bus. Uh, the, for the entirety of the year eight, I was also an asshole. Uh, I guess I was just like trying to make friends, but free force, if you know what I mean. And I was hated for that, which I understand. Uh, and there is this girl who gets the same bus stop as me. Like, we, we both get on in my village. And her best friend's brother is the same. And I was standing next to him. I'm going to assume that I was trying to talk to him. Uh, and he pushed me. So, right, if, like if, if you manage that from standing across the road, the guy's brother, the, the girl's best friend's brother, who I'm just going to call George, he's standing to the left, I'm standing in the middle. The girl, who I'm just going to call Emily, is standing to the right. Or from my perspective, she's at my left, he's at my right. I'm trying to talk to George. George pushes me and I almost bump into Emily. Emily assumed I was stalking her and reported me. I got put on a C3, which is uh, after school detention. When that's not what happened, I was pushed. Now we're on the year nine, which is also year zero. Uh, the only thing that happened, it's worth talking about in year nine is that once again I was being a dick to George trying to talk to him he pushed me again I said that he was going to be put on the principal's special list I'm talking about my ass at that point basically saying that he's going to get expelled and at that point he punched me uh, and then reported it and he wasn't as I, I don't. He might have been punished. I don't remember. And I was put on a C four, which is uh, internal suspension. So you spend the entire day with that a year. Also, I, I just want to say this because that, I, I didn't mind doing the C four, but uh, I had a year at the time was also my English teacher and I had English. The last two periods of that of that day, um, instead of putting me in that class, he's like, "Oh, no, you can't be in regular class." So he, he put me in like the the storage room or whatever you want to call it. It's just weird. Anyway, uh, really, that's it for year zero. These incidents might be important to what's ha what's coming up. So anyway. Year one, which is the theme of rebirth. Nothing really happened in year one until about March, uh, where a student who I'm going to call Rudis, um, so he. He has English, I have English, but we're in different classrooms. His classroom uh, is further ahead of mine, and there's like four people standing in his way. Me and three other people. And we weren't doing it intentionally, it's just, uh, you know, unintentional. And instead of saying, excuse me, to get people out of his way, he puts his hand on my neck. I just want to make it clear, he did not choke me. But anyway, I had two witnesses who were members of staff. The head of year from last year, and since I hadn't, like, I, I was at deck to him in year nine, but since it had been roughly a year since I talked to him, he forgot all about that. Uh, and also, I'm trying to think of a nice way the. To let you know who this person is. The uh, 
I'm going to call him the disabled kid. I get that that's very mean. I am sorry. I just can't think of a way to let people instantly know who I'm talking about. And it's not the kid that was actually in a wheelchair. It's the other kid who is now Deputy Hebo, I think. That guy. His classroom assistant. Oh, that reminds me uh, a couple things in Gear 9 that I forgot to mention. That classroom assistant, and this isn't any of my best things to talk about, but it could be important. Her daughter, who also worked at the school, died. Uh, and then my year at math teacher, who also has the same surname as the disabled kid's uh, t- teacher's surname, and her daughter's surname, she also died. Anyways. Back to Brutus. So those, those two members of staff stopped. Okay, sorry, not, not probably what I'm saying. Talking crap. Anyway, so they both saw it. Um, the former English teacher had said that uh, I should immediately go to my classroom assistant. But the disabled kid's assistant said that I should immediately write a report of what happened. I immediately wrote a report of what happened. And I attended class. This was first thing in the morning. Attended class, then it was break. You know, went on the canteen, got my food, went down to where uh, that my group sits. Right? And I've been sitting there since sometime in year nine. So over a year, this was known as the spot that I go to and all my friends go to. Brutus has never gone there from the time that I was going there. Right? I call this group the Compass. The Compass rarely slash never associates with Brutus. Also, Brutus is usually hanging out with exclusively women who are older than him. Like, about one or two years older than him. But today, he was hanging out with men in our year in the compass where I normally am. Uh, because he was there before me, it, you know, it was assumed by member staff, by eyewitnesses who are members of staff that I was going there to try and beat him up, I guess. Like, I wouldn't do that. I can't take that man on. Um, um, like, he, he turned around and I was like, oh crap, it's him. He's like, no, what are you doing here? Like, after what just happened? Wait, hold on. I'm sorry that this isn't true. So, let me rewind. There were two eyewitnesses to what Brutus did to me on that day. One of them was the, the former English teacher. The other one was a different classroom assistant. It was not the disabled kids classroom assistant. It was someone else. She said nothing. And what the, the former English teacher said, he actually said, and I went to my class assistant and reported it. Around the time that this was happening in PE, another kid was bullying me, who I'm going to call Dylan. It, it, it wasn't one of the Dylans, just his name is similar to Dylan. <clears throat> I reported it to the PE teacher and he specifically said do not go to the head of year about this. Keep that in mind. So two weeks after what Brutus did to me I do not remember what happened. I do not remember if I started it or if he started it. 
either I got pissed off and pushed him from my line to his, or he did something, I got pissed off. You know, either I did it for no reason, or because there was an actual reason, even if that reason was not justified. I don't remember. I'm sorry. That is when the disabled kid's classroom assistant saw me and said that I was in the wrong. I might have been in the wrong, but this man was not punished for what he did to me two weeks ago. You know, she made me as a, as a villain. <coughs> Hold on, but I sneeze. Never mind. Um, so, she only saw me push him. She did not see what started it and she did not see him putting his hand on my neck and she was like she was describing me like I was Hitler and then she said write a report what happened and then that day everything that I said about what happened in the canteen happened a classroom assistant who I think was the same one that was an eyewitness to what happened two weeks prior uh, led me out of the out of the classroom and said to immediately go to the head of year. I did. I showed him the document, and he said, "Okay, so the the document that I wrote, which I can't access anymore because of something that happened in year two." Uh, he said, "So right, the document said that there were four people in the way, someone, someone, Dylan Hamilton, the worst person to ever exist, and someone." He said, "Why do you call yourself the worst person to ever exist?" And he actually punished me for saying that. The reason why I said that is because of the, the amount of punishments I get for no reason. So, like, he doesn't get the irony of what he just did. Anyway, he read and he said, right, okay, so what I've gathered from this is, you started it. So... You would be on a C4, but because you've been so nice all year, because this is like March or April, because you've been so nice, you're not going on a C4, you're going on a C3. No, sir, please don't put me on a C3. I'm fine with doing a C4, just make it unofficial. What do you mean, unofficial? You cannot have an unofficial C4. Yeah, really, well, how come the head of year from last year put me in an unofficial C4? Hmm? And if you're going to say anything bad about him, go on ahead. I'll, I'll let him know because I respect him. I don't respect you. Um, I didn't say that to him because like, I, didn't, I haven't talked to the year 10 head of year since that day. It's been three years. I really need to talk to him before I leave forever. I don't mean death. I mean... You know, graduating. <clears throat> so, uh, hold on a second. I'll be right, Clem. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Around the same, okay, right. He phoned up my mum. Explain what happened, and my mom said, "Is this, is this that same kid that in P? No, what happened P? She explained what happened P. I said, "Why did you not report that to me, Dylan? Because the PE teacher told me specifically, don't report it to you. He had no reaction. He almost as if he ignored me. So, around the same time that this was happening." I need to make clear that me, Jack, and two other students sit at the same table in technology. The disabled kid sits at a table at the other end of the technology room. And apparently, what, what I was told at the time was that 
the head of your middle eye about Jack fingering the disabled kid's ass in technology. And that's where me and Jack formed a bond because we stuff was being made up about us around the same time by the same person. And I sorry I I know I said that I didn't talk I haven't talked to the head of year since I have. The last conversation I had with him was on this day because that caused something where he eventually this was an art that he that Jack told me this. And then about five minutes later, uh this all caused something to happen where I had to talk to Eddie again and I basically called myself worthless. I said, Do you play video games, Dylan? Yes. What's the last video game you played? Assassin's Creed? What level are you? About eighty. Oh well you you must be good at video games then. There there's your worth. No. One. This is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Getting the level eighty is nothing. <coughs> Two I am not good at video games at all. Just, no matter how much I play them, I'm not good at them. Free. This means nothing in real life unless I go into a sector that requires skills in games. Yeah. Anyway. Around the end of the year. Uh, so... Me, McCubrey, and another guy, and a Scottish guy who I'm going to call, who I call Highlander in the school videos. We all sit together in one class, bonding. Highlander eventually got me in the Count Dangula. Thank you for that, Highlander. But I was sick and tired of the fact that for most of the school year, he always made... He always talked about how he hated Northern Ireland, he hated Northern Irish people, Northern Irish culture, ex culture etc. Which, honestly, I agree with him. But I was just tired of him saying it over and over and over again. So I made fun of him for being Scottish. This was on the very last week of year one. Um, and he didn't like that, so he was going to report me. Eventually he didn't. But just that was a dick move. Anyway. So the reason why year one is year rebirth is because I was reborn on that day where Brutus put his hat on my neck. I call that Justice Day. Because that did that kick started my passion for justice within the school. Because I don't want People being bullied and then being punished for being bullied in the way that I am being punished for being bullied. But anyway, year two has the theme of espionage. Although people do not like that title or that theme, so instead, people have opted to call it a silent war. Around the end of September, everyone who gets my bus was called up. To the library. And everyone that gets. One of the banger bosses was, was caught up to the library. And in the line. like before, We didn't immediately go to the library. We had the line up. And Brutus was a couple people ahead of me. He turned around and saw me. And said hey it's Dylan. You up here as well. Yeah because you get the banger bus. I don't get the banger bus. Yeah you do. You get the banger bus. I don't get the banger bus. Yeah you do. I don't get the banger bus. Uh, I said that really loud there. Head of your looked at me, but or just looked at my general direction, didn't actually look at me, and then just did nothing. This kick started an entire goddamn year of him bullying me and not being punished. I would recount everything that he did, but I can't. I'll get into why later. But from memory and in no order. Him and another guy who I'm going to call Carver. They are best friends. Brutus has ICT in one room. I have ICT in the next room. And Carver 
has ICP in the same room as me. Um, this room has windows that connect with each other so you can see in each other's classes. And at the very end of the day, on Monday, he opened up the door to go in uh, to talk to Carver. But from where both of them were standing, I was in the way. Carver walked towards him and was like, get out of the way, fat ass. And it, it just, to me, it, like, I know obviously they're not actually having sex, but it just seemed like that they were passionate lovers and it was the end of a, of a uh, romance movie, you know? Um, another thing he did were, was I was sitting in the office, don't remember why. He came up and was like, hey, Dylan, uh, I, mean, I don't remember what he said, but he, he just went up and farted in my face. Uh, about, like, ten seconds later, the absolute mad lad, uh, so my ICT teacher is all, was also my forum teacher in year two, absolute mad lad walked in, I reported it to him, and... He got, he put Brutus on a C3. He's like, yeah, right, I'll, I'll get down the bottom of this. I'm going to put Brutus on a C2. And he ended up putting Brutus on a C3. What a legend. Also, since the start of year two, I have been attending what I call therapy, but the school calls it mentoring. I had my drama teacher as my mentor. And she, I like to think of myself as a robot. I know I'm not obviously a robot. I'm talking metaphorically where I don't, I have emotions, but I, I don't get permanently affected by them. Like a robot wouldn't kill themselves. But the mentor tried to humanize me, which made me want to kill myself. And I have no problem talking about this because I don't want to kill myself anymore. And I have one of the other Dylans to thank for, who unfortunately gets bullied all the time. And has also left the school because he's not part of the Navy. Anyway. Um, also around Christmas, I had decided to add in the former English teacher who at this point is now my film studies teacher. I added him. To a Google Docs file, which I call Pro Justice, where I, I wrote up reports of what happened with Brutus. Uh, and I emailed it to both heads a year, form teacher, my personal account, my mum, uh, and a couple other people who were in the group for all other reasons. Oh, my class is my assistant as well. But when you share a document with someone, they get an email to say this person has shared this docs on Google Docs. And they were getting pissed off with the emails and eventually I added uh, the film studies teacher to the group and it emailed them saying, right, is we want, our aim is to destroy Brutus and destroy was the exact word that I used and his perception of it was that I was going to kill Brutus and he reported it to I'm going to call this teacher Jane um, she's a ginger teacher that's the only description I can really give you probably know who I'm talking about now and the next day I go into her room and she said Get rid of pro losses. I was like, fine. And I did it. All the documents were deleted. And I only realised two days ago, so the 28th of June 2022, that the reason why she got me to do that is because those, those uh, Google Docs could be used as a record of the school allowing me to be bullied. So she was saving this girl's ass. All these people that have betrayed me, I, I am going to get revenge on them. And I don't mean that in like a violent way. 
Like, I'm not going to let anyone control me anymore. I'll explain more at the end of the video. <clears throat> so anyway. This froze over. Because the pandemic hit. And in the pandemic. I had made friends with. Right, so in the school videos I talk about a guy called Kelly. Kelly is friends with a guy who is two years younger than us. And we would be in PlayStation parties all, you know, all together. Um, and eventually we started playing with his mates and his mates' mates. And eventually we started playing, or well, I started playing with uh, a group that... I, I can't think of a name for, for these groups, but the only person in this group that you really need to know is a guy that I'm going to call Caesar. We would all play Siege and For Honor and a couple other games together, but mainly Siege. And Siege has this uh, custom game mode called Michael Myers, where and I'm not going to bother explaining Siege. I'm going to explain all this as if you know how Siege works. The custom game, you can have as many people as you want on the defending team, but one person, only one person can be on the attacking team, and that person has to play Sledge. Also, I don't think it's exclusively played on plane, but we did exclusively play it on plane. I was almost always, when the person, person playing Sledge has to kill Everyone on the defending team using exclusively the sledgehammer. The other team, the defending team, isn't allowed to kill the, the, the attacker who we call Michael. <coughs> um, but Caesar started, just thought it was funny to kill me over and over again. Um, and after that day, I blocked him. And he disappeared for about two weeks. But then eventually he wanted to join parties again. But the way the PlayStation parties work is that if you try and join a party, but a person in that party has blocked you, you cannot join that party. And it'll let you know you can't join this party because someone in the party has blocked you. And they all knew it was me. It was calling up and they saying, get Dylan to unblock me so I can join. Dylan, unblock Caesar. No. Um, eventually I did, and he was calm for, I don't know how long, but we got talking, and I said that you remind me of this guy called Brutus. Yeah, I know Brutus, he's my best mate. That's why I called him Caesar, which I understand now. That if anything, I'm Caesar because, you know, Caesar was betrayed and uh, that's what I was going for with the name Caesar. But I'm going to keep the name Caesar anyway. After this, he started bullying me even more. And almost all of the group was bullying me all the time. But eventually I blocked all of them. I stopped playing with them. And this leads into year three, which is has the theme of proceduralism, if that's a word. Uh, with coronavirus. Okay, so what I would normally do in years one and two was a break. I would get my break, go to either the library or the ICT room in technology and read. Same thing for lunch. But with the pandemic, I couldn't do that anymore. So instead, I would go to the bench outside modern foreign languages. And as would everyone else in the compass. And this is the, this is at the point where I eventually gave the name compass. But anyway. Excuse me. After about... 
two weeks. Okay, that's that's uh, not two weeks. We'll, we'll say a month. After about a month. Oh, and because Corona and this was basically the start of the pandemic, and well, you know, start of yeah, pandemic, not lockdown. All the year groups were split up, and outside modern foreign languages was the designated area for year 12, which is what we are now. So uh, we would all go there, and it'd be fine, I'd be reading. I finished all of Invincible in like three weeks, or maybe three days, three weeks. That, that's fantastic, yes, but the year 8s, 9s, 10s, 11s, 13s and 14s all migrated through that area, including uh, Caesar. Also, I should mention that at this point, Brutus has left. But his legacy is still felt. So, we moved. And even though it was a tiny move, just from, just outside modern foreign languages and that bench, to outside music. Tiny move. Big impact. I couldn't read because I don't like reading, sitting or standing up. So instead, I was I was talking to the compass, and eventually, Highlander's friend Kyle comes. Kyle, I thought, was year thirteen. Turns out he's year fourteen, and he almost immediately said to me that he knew my exact type of person and he didn't like that type so you know immediately he didn't like me without even giving me a chance to leave an impression on him um, we got into a bunch of arguments all the time every single day very very toxic um, all the while uh, Caesar was always Going, hey, Dylan, remember me? You need to unblock me on PlayStation. No, not doing it. And yeah, I basically just said it. So, the reason why uh, year three is year of proceduralism is because this seems all mundane. This is nothing compared to uh, year one or two, or even year zero. But this was worse than one, two, and zero combined. But what's even worse than zero, one, two, and three combined is year four, which is the theme of comedy. The reason why it is the theme of comedy. Is because of what the theme of year 5 will be. We are not in year 5 right now. It's just I've planned it all out. But before we actually get into year 4. Over the summer. A student has said to me that he will send me a video by a YouTuber called Counterpoints. And I should react to it to give him my opinions. He didn't send me the video. But I knew that it was Counterpoints. And this is actually one of my very first videos on YouTube. Here is my mate Dermy to react to a Connor Points video. I did that, but he disappeared. Uh, and on the 1st of June 2021, after school was over, I eventually decided, oh wait, we're both on a Discord together. Uh, so I can contact him that way. And I tried to. I'm going to call this guy Elf. Well, I already called this guy Elf Ward. I said, Elf Ward, you dared me to react to a Connor Points video. I did. This is the correct one. Tell me what the correct one is. He never told me what it is, but I assume it's the video on incels. Which I didn't do in this video, I did do it much later. Anyway. Uh, people, 
Jack, uh, you know, everyone sort of friends with talking to me on Discord. And Kyle was on the Discord. And I knew it was Kyle because people were calling him Kyle, but I assumed that it was another Kyle. But then it turns out it was it was Kyle the year fourteen who was a prick. And eventually me and Jack got on a voice chat together and then Kyle joined. And Kyle within five seconds sent a screenshot of my house that he got from Google Maps and said, This you question mark. I asked Jack, how this happened, uh, he's able to do this. And Jack said that apparently there's a file on the school computers that anyone can access that has a bunch of details about students, including their, their location and their device. Anyway, a bunch of arguments happened on Discord throughout the entire summer. Uh, very toxic, uh, you know, basically. The same as year three, just online. This leads into year four. Because on results day, I have shown the this you message to a couple of teachers and they um, explained. I said what Jack said to me and they denied it. But, based off something that Jack and Kyle said makes me believe that Jack was telling the truth and the school were just trying to cover their ass. Because Jack said, do you mean next, basically. And Kyle said, what's your surname? And Jack said, the Kubri. And uh, Kyle got up the Kubri's address, the five fact we're talking about McKnight. Uh, so that that leads me to believe that because there's there's only two options either uh, Jack is correct and there is this file or Kyle just hacked my IP. But if Kyle hacked my IP, Kyle wouldn't have got the wrong address if he was looking for Jack's address, which leads me to believe that. The school are lying and trying to cover their ass when they say this file does not exist and is not available for students to just look at. Anyway. So, I get good results. I pass all my exams. Uh, and even got an A in English. And um, uh, they say, do you want to come back to A levels? Yes. What subjects you want to do? Uh, media, RE, and digital technology, which is just ICT. But it turns out that uh, the RE teacher suggests I don't do RE because I wouldn't be good at it. And uh, there is no. The, the, there is a uh, digital technology A level, but it's like. OCN or something like that, and it's also in the same block as, as media, and media was the thing that I definitely wanted to do, so no ICT. Instead, the RE teacher suggested that I do move an image arts because there's a bit of IT in that, so I picked that. And the English teacher, who was also my form teacher in, in year three, suggested that I do English because I got an A in it, so I did that. Anyway. The reason my year four is a comedy is because instead of, on top of what I said, instead of Latin, right, instead of feeling sorry for me, you should be laughing at me in, in this, just for this year. So, about, like, exactly two years after the first incident with Brutus, in year two, Highlander tried to sneak a can of monster into my bag. And I felt him try to do that. And because, well, 
I thought he was trying to take my iPad, and I'm very paranoid about people. Well, okay, paranoid is not the correct word. I was scared about people taking my iPad because the school freaks out even if uh, it's not my fault at all. But anyway, because of that, I quickly turn around and try and slap him, but I miss. I hit Jack instead. And this started what became known as the Magician Civil War. Because since McCubrey was gone, a bunch of other great people were gone. The compass is not enough. We need to combine the compass with a bunch of other groups. This group is known as the Magicians. And that's the Magician Civil War. Anyway. <clears throat> so. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't know why I'm drawing blanks considering this is all very recent. In about November, uh, the film studies teacher, who is now the media studies teacher, and at this point I've realised that media studies is, I thought media studies, but it just meant the exact same as film studies, just instead of doing exclusively film, we're doing films, TV, radio, everything else. No, film studies is crap. Or sorry, media studies is crap. Like film, film studies is, watch film, analyse it, write an essay. It's fine. It's a tolerable level. Media studies, there's far too much content to do in less than two years. And also, it's just a bunch of radical, far-left BS. But, so I asked a question that I couldn't answer. And I said, I don't know. I said, yes, you do. Which, this is very similar to a scene from Whiplash. And eventually, uh, someone else answered it for me. Or he, he spoon fed me the answer and I answered it. But I, I didn't know the answer because there is no answer. And I don't remember exactly what the question was, but it was like, we were looking at an ad for something. And the question was, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to make up a question. Where do they mention feminism? They don't at all. Sorry. Where do you see that this is a feminist advertisement? You don't. There's no feminist propaganda anywhere in this advertisement. And the answer is probably something like, there are women there. Anyway. Anything like that involves on a teacher. I call it a whiplash because of similarity to whiplash. And any incidents that involve students rather than teachers, I call an incident. Any minor incidents that aren't worthy of being called incidents, I call situations. So the thing that kicks out uh, Magician Civil War was incident number one. Anyway. At uh, the start of 2022, there was something that, at the time that it happened, I was very, very uh, keen on saying that it is not an incident. But honestly, it was. So Highlander had talked about was talking about his Indian girlfriend and for no reason to even my surprise I just bored about Dirty Bastard. Don't know why. Uh just did. And then I started ranting and said a bunch of racist stuff. Like, you know, I'll admit it, I was racist. Um I want to make it clear that he found this funny. This is very important for what happens later. It was just me, Highlander, and another student. 
But eventually another student who I'm going to call Peter. Because I think in the school video for that day, I did mention how the way he acted was similar to that guy from Family Guy. He's like, this guy's a phony. So he came over and they explained what happened to him. I honored him, the other guy. I was like, he, he overreacted. Eventually, the next week, the reason why this was this happened next week is because this happened on a, on a Friday, so nothing could have been done until the next week. Anyway, next week, I get pulled out of class by the male head of the year, and I explain what happened to him, and then he coerced me. Oh, he he also handled incident number one, and he was fantastic at it. Like the only the only way that he could have been better is if it was. It was something that's out of his control because he will never be as good as the head of years and years and years two and three. They were fantastic. They were the very first people to consider context and also the absolute legend of my form teacher in year 11 who unfortunately left after that. But anyway... Uh, so, but his handling of this was terrible. And even though this time, okay, both times it was my fault, whatever. This time he handled it terribly. And instead of doing his goddamn job, he coerced me into telling him everything that I plan on doing in the next year. This is a betrayal of everything that we had built up in the past five months. Four, whatever. So, <clears throat> I couldn't trust him. The only people that I trust at this point is the mentor, who is no longer the person from year two. Uh, also, my class assistant is gone, but I didn't really trust her anyway. I've been in place with someone else. But she wasn't really there for me the entire year. Uh, the only people I trust at that point were... It was both heads a year. Um, there were two female head years. One of them left. She was the also in in year 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 eight. But she left after about a month or so. I got replaced by the English teacher. I trusted her and the male head of year initially until he broke my trust. So at this point the only people I trust are the female head of year, my mentor, uh and my form teacher. But the form teacher left. Uh, not long later. But anyway. I assumed that Peter was the one that had reported me. And for good reason. It wasn't. It was Highlander. And something... <laughs> this is something you need to understand, right? I... The thing that I said was not funny. It was downright racist. But Islander found it funny. He laughed and then he reported me. You cannot do that. You can laugh at me or you can report me. You cannot do both. They're hypocritical. Like this is something that Jimmy Carr's pointed out because he's you know, he's an offensive comedian or was an offensive comedian. He said an offensive joke and most of his audience went <gasps> and started laughing and clapping. Or, sorry, no, they, they laughed and clapped and then they went, <gasps> I pointed out, you cannot do both. You can find my joke funny or you can find my joke offensive. Highlander found it offensive and funny. He cannot do that. Him laughing at me means he cannot report me. But anyway, we made our peace eventually.
towards the end of the year, not long before the exam, like a week or two before the exams, hay fever season had started. And I was sneezing so much that it distracted my work because I have extremely bad hay fever. Um, so I, I sneezed a bunch and everyone around me was laughing at me. Eventually I, I got up and over the mentor explained what happened and I was hoping she could do something. She didn't. She told me to go to first aid, which is the study teacher. And so, you know, they said, just go back to study. I did. On the way there, I shut the first three windows. And the way that those windows work is that if you shut them from the outside, they will bang. But if you shut them from the inside, they won't. So, <clears throat> she heard me banging the windows and went out to set the teacher. She's like, why are you banging the windows? I have hay fever. I shut the windows so that my hay fever doesn't act up. And she basically said, no, you didn't do that. You were just banging the windows for the sake of banging the windows. And even if you do have hay fever, just sit at the opposite end of the room. That's not how it works. You don't realise how bad my hay fever is. Don't act like you know me. Like if I if I go to the opposite end of the room, it's still gonna act up. So next time I'm gonna sneeze on you. I reported this to the female head of year. The next day, uh she had a talk with the study teacher and basically defended the study teacher. Around my trust, and actually, this broke a rule that I didn't know because in in year three, I created a bunch of rules. But what I did not know existed was rule zero, because uh, it turns out I have three sides, and this is gonna sound cringe. I don't care. It's the only way that I can really describe it. I've already mentioned human side, robot side, but there's also the beast side. Which is just permanently angry. And uh, satiates that anger by listening exclusively to Sabertooth Tiger by KG Just The entirety of Thank You Happy Birthday by KG Elephant. Which is a, a very aggressive album. And also Trim Trap by Blur. Which is also a very aggressive song. Um, like... That's rule zero. Don't unleash the beast. So, both the study teacher and the female head of year broke rule zero. Anyway, I spent, so we had the exams, and then after that, there was like three weeks of a break. But, Near the end of that break, I caught a cold, and then uh, I caught the cold on a Thursday. I still had the cold on Saturday. On a Saturday, I went to my cousin's wedding, and then on Tuesday, it turns out that someone at the wedding had corona and gave it to both my parents. So... I was going to school like, very cautious because I didn't have corona. But about a week later, I caught corona. And it's, it was just terrible. Um, on the very last day of year four, which is the day that I'm recording this, 30th of June 2022, me and Jack made our peace, ending the Magician Civil War. So, why did I plan for year four to be a comedy? 
I actually forgot to mention something. Before the incident with hay fever and the you're banging on the windows BS. I was planning for year five to have the theme of despair. The exact opposite of comedy which honestly I should have called it tragedy but I'm just going to stick with despair. Um, so it's going to be complete comedy this year. Despair next year. But female head of year brought the despair early while it demanding with the comedy. And I know this isn't a word, but since she forced this, I'm going to force a word on it. So from that, that point till the end of the Magician Civil War, wasn't a comedy and it wasn't despair. It was both called disparity. So year five next year will be despair. will be the last year. Where I will hopefully make up for everything that I did in the past five years. While also making sure that the school... Is a safe place because the way I see the school is that it's a school for freaks. Or it's advertised itself that way. You know. Uh, you won't do well in any other school. Come to us. Because everyone here is a misfit. And then. You know. School for freaks. Kind of like. Like the school from X-Men I guess. But actually it's. Like a freak museum. You know. Ah, look at look at all these freaks. So I want the school to be a place for freaks. I just don't want the freaks to be laughed at and bullied. I want that part gone. I want to be this, a safe place for freaks to go. I keep on saying freaks. That's the meaning. Misfits. I want the misfits to have a place to stay. Where they will not be bullied. And they will not be punished. For being bullied. And the way that I'm going to go about this. Is by pointing it out. And having a permanent record. Because I did have a permanent record. But they coerced me. Into deleting it. And for two and a half years. I didn't realise that. That's what they were doing. So that they could continue. To bully the misfits. And get away with it. Well, no more 